On Un Photo Raw 2024's vast feature set is one advantage that sets it apart from its competitors. Unfortunately though, most beginners probably only scratch the surface of its capabilities. One example is the Properties panel, which is shown whenever the masking icon is clicked. This panel has a ton of masking and compositing tools, yet most users would probably just dismiss this panel not knowing what it is for. For a time, I certainly did so. So in this video, I thought it would be useful to orient users on the functionality of the Properties panel to help users get the most out of on one as we run through not one, not two, but eight important functions of the Properties panel. So let's get right into it. To demonstrate the first function, let's use this image. I'll start off by enhancing the details of just the building. To do that, I'll use the newly improved Super Select tool to mask the building. As you can see, with the newly updated masking in 2024.5, selecting the building is effortless. By the way, if you're interested in knowing what the improvements of the new masking is, do watch my videos on the topic. I'll leave a link in the description. There, the mask is done. How do you view it closer to check for any errors? That brings us to the first function of the Properties panel, viewing a mask. I'll open the panel by clicking the mask icon. I'll click the View Mask button. There, the mask is shown large. Happily, it appears there aren't any errors. Let's perform some minor tone adjustments to brighten the building. Next, let's enhance the details of the currently masked building. The best tool to enhance details is called Dynamic Contrast, but this is not in the Develop panel, but in the Effects panel. Since we want to limit the details adjustment to just the building, I'll need an additional step to copy the mask we've just created. And that brings us to the second function of the Properties panel, Copy and Pasting the Mask. I'll click the Copy button. I'll navigate to the Effects panel. I'll add a Dynamic Contrast filter. I'll click on the Mask icon. As you can see, the mask shown is still the default mask, entirely in white. I'll click the Paste button. As you can see, the mask is now added. I'll move the sliders to enhance the details. There, the detail has now been enhanced. Next, let's lower the exposure of the sky. I'll navigate back to Local Adjustments. I'll click the Add Adjustments button to create a new adjustment layer. I'll name the layer Sky. I'll paste the previous mask. As you can see, the mask now appears on the thumbnail. Also, as I adjust the exposure, you can see that the mask is incorrectly affecting the building, not the sky. So how do we get the adjustment to affect the sky? And that brings us to the third function of the Properties panel, Inverting a Mask. I'll click the Invert Mask button. There, the mask is inverted. Let's perform the adjustment. As you can see, the exposure adjustment now correctly affects the sky. So that is the third function. Let's move on to the fourth. To demonstrate the fourth function, let's work with this image. I'll try to brighten the tree. Once again, I'll use Super Select to increase the exposure. Unfortunately, the adjustment is spilling over the edges, and that has to do with the mask not perfectly fitting the subject. One way to rectify this is to use the Refine Brush, as I've demonstrated in previous videos. However, you might not know that there is an alternative way to improve the mask, and that brings us to the fourth function of the Properties panel, 
performing global adjustments on the mask. The adjustments that are usually used are the density and feathering sliders. Let's view the mask to understand what these adjustments do. As you can see, feathering blurs the mask, which helps reduce the harshness of the transition between the selected and unselected areas. On the other hand, density reduces the contrast of the mask, which also has a similar effect of reducing the harshness of transitions. Now that we know how these sliders work, let's use them to improve the adjustment. I'll increase the feathering and reduce density. As you can see, the halos have been removed, resulting in a more natural edit. So that was the fourth function. Let's move on to the fifth function. The fifth function is luminosity masking. Luminosity masking is something I've discussed at length in a previous video, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. Suffice to say that luminosity masking is a powerful tool whenever you need to create a precise mask of objects characterized by distinct brightness. One great thing about On One's luminosity masking is its masks can be refined with a brush with built-in edge detection, something that competitors like Luminar and DxO Photo Lab lack. Do watch my video if you're interested to know how to use the luminosity mask. Next, let's move on to the sixth function, color range masking. While luminosity masking is useful for objects with distinct brightness, color range masking, another tool which you probably didn't know existed because I also didn't until I was informed by our kind viewers, works great for objects with a distinct color. Here is one such image. Let's mask out the sky with the color range tool. I'll enable color range. I'll use the picker to select the sky's color. I'll adjust the tolerance. Ideally, we want to have the sky in black while the building in white. There, that looks good, but the colors are reversed. I'll click the invert mask button. There, that's a good initial mask created with very little effort and can be further refined with other masking tools. The seventh function is blending. Blending is a common function in compositing editors like Photoshop or Affinity Photo. You might not know that this can also be done in On One. To start off, from the Layers panel, I'll duplicate the layer. I'll navigate to the Blending tab. I'll choose the Blending mode in the drop-down. As you can see, On One provides a multitude of blending modes like Darken, Multiply, Color Burn, etc. I'll choose Linear Burn, which I think gives the best result. In addition to choosing a blending mode, On One also supports adjusting the opacity and masking for even more refined edits. The eighth function is adding of text. Yes, On One can do yet another Photoshop feature, add text to an image. To do that, I'll click the text button. I'll navigate to the text tab. As you can see, On One provides a ton of options for modifying text properties, such as the font, color, size, character spacing, etc. So there you have it, eight functions of the properties panel, perhaps the most overlooked, underutilized, and misunderstood panel in On One Photo Raw 2024. I hope now with better awareness, you can better appreciate On One's editing capabilities. Let me know if I missed anything, or if you have any questions, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.